are now live. Will you start by telling um, what's your name and what you do at Ericsson? Okay, uh, my name is Brett Huntley. Uh, I work for a section called Network Design and Optimization. Um, and I'm involved in doing optimization services to customers, supporting particularly Asian, Asian customers. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, can I take you through? Yeah, we're super excited. So like, first of all, I wanted to uh, mention to viewers, he's really going to be talking about network planning, of course, as you can see, intelligent planning and optimization for network services. But the part to me that was really interesting was the, um, the network analysis part of it. So like the data science uh, and machine learning part of the work. Okay. Absolutely, and it's good to also say this is actually a real practical use case where we've got this has been implemented for our customer in SoftBank. Okay, so you'll see a lot of theory around Barcelona in terms of AI, but this is one where we've taken the theory and applied it to design. So, as we'll see, what we're actually doing is a particular challenge in, in the Ericsson Cloud RAN network around centralized and elastic RAN design, which is a complex problem of how to connect baseband units together and find the optimal settings between cells and baseband units. The idea here is actually to maximize spectral efficiency and therefore get user throughput improvement to the best level. And it's a problem we can't tackle as humans because of the hundreds and millions of combinations we need to look at. In terms of the brains behind it, what we're actually doing is a few steps, okay? We're starting off with a cell coverage over analysis where we're taking real user information from the network that's sent to us in terms of performance data, configuration, and traces data to create a model of how each cell is related to another one, okay? That's important starting bus for us to make sure that we understand and we actually get the users itself to effectively tell us how these cells should be clustered into basebands and baseband units into hubs as well. So, when we actually look at it, what we're actually trying to do here is analyze it via community protection algorithm, which, how they should be actually joined. And it's to optimize how we implement three Ericsson features. Uplink, up, uh, what you call, uplink combined multipoint reception, combined cell, and carrier aggregation. So we use this modeling to actually understand how these should be done in a constrained way. Typically, models like community detection, like what's done with Facebook, are unconstrained. So they're unlimited. We have to apply to telecoms, and that's the real challenge for us in terms of machine learning. We have to understand our features, understand what the operator wants, the capacity that they've got in the network, and so transmission, site-to-site -site distance, and apply those public uh, models. Can you speak up a little? Uh, it's yeah. very loud. Sorry, okay, let me try. Uh, yes, we have to apply those models to the telecoms world, which is a challenge for us, and that's actually what we've done successfully in this case, and we've actually patented our resulting algorithm. Great. Okay, so, uh, Additional thing is, we after we've done that design, we do PCR planning. So this is an example of where we've done it in Tokai. So for, this is a site where we've done, sorry, this is an area where we've got about 313 cells. It's multi-band, which is the challenge for aggregation. How do we combine those bands, all the different frequencies, all the features into the best user performance? And it's something we cannot do as humans anymore. So we're just going to display graphically what the relationship from one cell to another and how it overlaps in terms of quality and signal strength. That's one of the inputs that we consider in addition to what the operator provides us in terms of its limitations and capacity, baseband planning, future sites, new deployments. So we consider that all as part of the model when we actually do a community detection. Now this is going to show you, for example, four, site, four configurations for this network that's been manually planned. A lot of this isn't intuitive, meaning we have the combinations might not be obvious to give the best performance. So I'll just randomly click through what we've done that typically your top engineer would actually be able to do. You can see, for example, here we have about 18 megabits per second in this example, and 18.2 uh, in this one, and 17.2. So depending on actually how you configure it, you will get better performance. And this is with the same sites, the same hardware deployed on site, same software, the same deployment. Just changes in connectivity. Exactly. Just change the connectivity. This is based on simulations, okay? And this is what we actually, just to show you. Now I'm going to select one example, and then I'll let, basically we can process a visualization of what the algorithm is doing, okay? Mm -hmm. And as I said, this is based on enhanced walk track, where we're actually looking which is the best way to go from one, one cell to another using a vertex thing, to understand how the coverage overlap is actually stood within all the constraints we fed the system. So the algorithm itself is deciding the best way to actually combine uh, cells, which cells should it be connected to in order to maximize user improvement, user throughput. And that's where the booty comes in. We are not telling it where to start from. We are asking the machine, please give us the best design based on a learning of it. So this is what, what we're actually doing in this particular example we've done. I see you've got a question. 
I'm just trying to relate it to um, my experience. So I'm trying to think because I started out in data science doing hydraulic modeling. But that was rules-based, because you're, you're saying that these are predictions, these are predictive. So you're, you're running machine learning in the background to do yes. your simulation. Yes, effectively. It's not rule-based. We're actually yeah. letting the machine actually figure out which is the best combination, as long as it prioritizes things like user throughput and carry aggregation. How many are you using, like, how many different types of algorithms? Are there many types of algorithms, or you just choose one type of algorithm and use that as the base model to make the prediction? We use one type effectively to actually uh, apply them. When you look at machine learning, this is the challenge actually I think all operators have. You actually have to pick the right algorithms to combine in some cases to yeah. actually get the right uh, results. In this particular case, we're using community detection and enhanced walk track because this is the particular machine learning algorithm that suits the challenge we have, which is effectively how to establish which is the best combination best community to actually connect these cells and this is where a telecom operator when you combine our knowledge with machine learning you understand which is the best algorithm you actually need to incorporate and actually adapt okay so you're making so you're making that suggestion um, so you're just picking one ideal one instead of a combination of them it depends on the user case okay, so, I'd, so I'd, maybe you would do a combination absolutely so if we were doing more an issue classifier problem we would typically combine different things for example neural networks or whatever it is in this particular case real thing it's community detection as i said enhanced walk track algorithm that we're doing it's what effectively based on enhanced walk track okay community detection if you have a look at it okay, okay? So when we actually have a look at what a manual design can do versus machine learning, again, same site, same hardware, software. Oh, nice. We can actually get a great improvement in sites. So you're basically showing network analysis like the traditional way versus uh, backed by machine learning models. Yeah, exactly, right. Fantastic. Okay, and again, this is means Ericsson uh, software and hardware not only is what it could best when it comes to the products and the software, but now we need the best design. And that's where machine learning really helps us to actually get the most out of our hardware software and for the operator it's about capex investment and also optics we do it. So we you have guys short offer the times. software that it's got the machine learning built into it? No, we offer at the moment, okay, we've this is a standalone, we offer it as a service, okay, okay. but the software for example to enable uh, Elastic RAM or those features I mentioned like uh, uplink, uh, uplink combined multipoint reception, combined cell or carrigation is actually features that come as part of our deployment. Okay, so you're using, and I bet you're deploying all sorts of really sophisticated network algorithms in terms of well when you look at how elastic ran and how these features are actually done carrigation yes that's that is complex it's typically done by a different section in terms of products we take that hardware that software implementation in terms of making the ability and we make sure that it's implemented in the best way okay okay cool and then when you have a look at it this is, as I said, uh, a real user case where we've got with SoftBank. I've taken you through the scope and methods, how we combine it, looking at capacity, all the limitations. We apply this community detection algorithm for ERAN, which Ericsson has patented now because we've adapted it for telecoms as well. Big data analytics, 4.3 computations for 260 sites. And we can actually oh show, my. we can actually show throughput improvements. So this is a really good example because the operator has implemented oh ERAN my. design in an area. You and have we've, a lot of hard, I mean, and we've actually gone back and implemented in our vision and we can see what the difference is in terms of better carrigation throughput and traffic. We have higher through higher traffic with better throughput, which means that customer benefits here. So you're running this all on a platform? Yes it is a platform. Okay. Okay. It just hasn't about been, the hardware it hasn't that, been like, that would it be... hasn't been industrialized yet. Okay? okay. So when you industrialize it's not something that the operator can get as a product now. So you do it as a service on your own platform that you built? Correct. Got it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. And then Final yeah, slide. Oh, yeah. is, um, that's what we're doing. So, for example, as I said, we've got short elite times. We've we've shown up to forty percent on the softback, unbeatable performance, future done for, uh, future approved designs, and it's really about leveraging machine intelligence uh, for planning and optimization. And I'm hope there'll be more user cases, practical examples coming. It's what we're doing. And we're trying to just show here the possibilities, um, and then you'll see different user cases and different combination of algorithms to get the best for for our customers. Do you have an idea of how many customers you actually have deploying these, um, this solution at the moment? When you talk about ERAN design, this yeah. is with SoftBank. We're actually delivered in one area. We're now following that through. There's another operator in Southeast Asia, tier one operator we're delivering. That project is ongoing. This, as you, as you 
you saw earlier has been, uh, as we said earlier, has actually been developed throughout 2017. So now we're actually trying to roll it out uh, to selected operators that have that are basically on the road to 5G with elastic RAM and centralized RAM deployments. Okay, so when you said that this was the most pop, like it like commonly used uh, technology, you meant of the ones that you're showcasing here. It's one of the examples that we've actually got a really good reference for where we've actually designed it. A lot of the stuff that you see here is in research and development mode. We're okay, testing okay. out on a trial basis uh, just to actually develop further algorithms. This is something that has been, at least the concept has been industrialized and we can actually roll it out to customers. Okay, so it's boots on the ground. Cool. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. It was excellent. Okay.